Hello, this tutorial is going to show you how to mix multiple exposures in Photoshop. Hello, we're going to make a picture using multiple exposures. Uh, there is lots and lots of different ways to make double exposures, multiple exposures, but I've devised a tutorial here where it shows you lots of different techniques that you can apply to all sorts of double exposures and multiple exposures. I've also included the links to the images that I'm using in the description to this tutorial so you can download the pictures and you can follow along with me. So the first thing you're going to need is your free images. We are going to use these free images I got from um, free stock websites. Um, and this is the main image that we're going to use, this man. Uh, we're going to use a river here. And we're going to use a city skyline. Now the idea is that we have the river, lead, the perspective of the river leading into the middle of the eyes like this. And in the background, we have the high rise um, skyscrapers. And that's the idea. Now, the first thing that you want to do is create a image where this man's face is only visible and there is, it's like deleted in the background. And we're gonna do that by adding a quick mask. So select your quick mask uh, option down the bottom here. Select a brush that you want to use, which is just your normal brush. At the top here in your options, select a hardness of around about 80, 90%. Press return when you've done that. And then zoom in by pressing Control and the plus key like this. Hold down the space bar and move it around till you get to the edge. Make sure that your opacity of your brush is at 100%. Make sure that you've got black selected there. And again, like I said, the brush. And then start painting around the edge of the person. Now, if you go over like this, and I've done that on purpose, all you do is press the X key, which flicks the uh, color foreground and background color. So from black to white, black to white. White removes like that and black, press the X key and black adds. Okay, so you can get it nice and accurate. Now I'm gonna go around this whole body, uh, this whole person and create a lovely mask. And you don't wanna watch me doing that. So we're gonna fast forward to the end. So now you can see I've created a quick mask around the head. Uh, press the quick mask button in your toolbox again like that. And it creates a selection. Go select inverse. Drag the lock of your background down into the bin. And then that creates that, uh, that turns that into a layer. Hit the backspace and that deletes the background for you just like that. Press Control and D to deselect. And then I'm gonna go press Control and zero to full screen it. And now what you can see is I've got a nice face with a nice clear background. When you're deleting the hair, don't worry about it. Just come in slightly and just have it like that. Uh, it will look nice in the end, I promise. Now we're gonna start dragging the other exposures over the top of this one. So let's do the river one first. Select the move tool, click and hold on the image, drag it into the tab of your face, pull it down and release. And now what you can see is I've got my river uh, image on top of the face image. What you wanna do now is right click on the layer and go create clipping mask. Now what that's doing is, what the clipping mask is actually doing is, it's only attaching it to what is visible in the layer 
below and that's why we can now only see it within the head so now I can move it around wherever I want it to go now I'm going to change that layers opacity so I can see through it just in the layers palette here click on that drop down arrow and let's go down to about 50% and then I'm going to move it around so that it sits nicely within them eyes now that's not bad actually I'm just going to leave it roughly about there if you want to resize the image all you do is press control or command and T and that will bring up the free transform I'm just going to zoom out a little bit sorry that will bring up the free transform box like this and you can grab the corner hold down the shift key and you can re size it to scale like that and then I can move it back into place and actually that looks a lot better press control or command and the plus sign and you can zoom back in and that's uh, yeah that's looking really nice I think I will have it about there when you are happy with that click the tick along the top to apply the transformation so what we've got at the moment is our river let's press control and zero to full screen it we've got our river image over our face image and it's this bit that I want so let's take the opacity down just to check that the eyes are within the area that I want it to be I'm just going to move it across a little bit that's much better just like that okay now I don't want all of this area around the bottom here and I don't particularly want this bit at the top because this is where I'm going to put the um, skyscrapers. So I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer and we're going to use a paintbrush. We're going to use black paint. Right click and choose a nice soft brush. So I'm going to go right down to around 10% press the return key if you use your bracket keys you can make your brush size bigger and smaller and you can also change the opacity up the top here the opacity of your paintbrush so that you don't take away the layer uh, so harshly so let's take that down to about 50% or something like that and now what I'm going to do is rub away this bottom area which I don't want Let's bring the opacity of the layer back so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. Yes, that's quite nice. And I'm going to softly bring that up again. I'm just putting the, I'm using a tablet, a pen tablet, so I can actually use pen pressure. So I'm just going to turn them on. If you're not using a tablet, you can use the opacity at the top here, and that will take down the uh, level of black that you put on the mask and it makes it easier to control so this looks quite nice down the bottom here I like that and as you can see I've revealed the nose a bit because I want the nose to be uh, visible in the final picture now this bit at the top here let's take the opacity back so you can see this bit at the top I want to totally delete but the sky I mean so that that means then I can put the uh, high-rise the uh, skyscrapers I can put them in the background but what I'm going to do is use a, a different technique here to get rid of that I'm still going to be working on the mask here I'm going to press control and plus to zoom right in hold down the space bar pull this back down so I can see just the top of the image so I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool which is up here in your toolbox click and hold select polygonal lasso, lasso and this tool will give me a nice straight edge around my buildings like this all you do is you click on each edge it doesn't have to be that accurate you just want a nice clean straight edge now I'm going to go around all of these buildings um, and then I'll see you in a minute So I've gone around most of the building now and I'm just coming to the end of it and I just want to show you what to do next. So once you've finished off the top of your uh, skyline of the building, 
press control and minus to zoom out and then simply just click all the way around the edge like this easy as that come back to the beginning see see where the circle comes up on your cursor when that happens click and it will complete the selection like that then all you need to do is fill that selection with black press shift f5 select black from this drop down menu click ok and as you can see there it's just deleted it and give us a nice clean solid edge just like that press control or command and d to deselect okay now i'm going to drag the city skyline into the image so select the tab at the top select the move tool over here click and hold on the image drag to the man the face tab pull it down release and what you've got now is the uh, skyline on your image. Right click on the layer, create clipping mask, and it clips it to the one below, um, which clips it to the one below that, which is your face. And then you can move it around um, to suit. Um, I am actually gonna drag it underneath this layer, like that. And now I can see it in the background of my buildings, which is great. I'm gonna zoom out by pressing Control and zero. I'm gonna press Control and T to transform the layer, make it smaller. I'm gonna hold down the Shift key at the corner of the image, and I'm gonna click and hold and drag it so that it goes smaller. And I'm gonna move it roughly to where I want it to be and I just want these buildings to be poking out the back of the other image. That let's go like that. I don't want the I don't want the I don't want the road showing in this image. Um, just the buildings. That's not bad. That's not bad. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. Control and the plus sign. Uh, press the space bar. Bring it down a bit. Yes, that is good. Um, yeah. I'm gonna leave it like that. And then I'm gonna click the tick at the top to apply the transformation. And now what you can see is I've got these two images over the top of my face image like that. So let's press control and zero to full screen it. And you can see that underneath um, the river, the, sky, the skyscrapers are shining through. So again, I just use a mask which is this one here. I use a black brush and I rub all of that away, including up to the street there, like that. That is great. So that's how I want the two images positioned. It looks a little bit strange at the minute. Everything's like uh, the wrong color. So we're gonna harmonize the colors by putting a gradient map over the top of it all. I'm going to go click here. I'm going to select gradient map. I'm going to drag that gradient map to the top. As you can see, it's clipped. It's still clipped to the images below. If it's not on your one, right click on the layer and go create clipping mask. From this drop down menu, I've got photographic toning up. Now, if you haven't got that, click the settings, select photographic toning and a little box will come up and just select append and this will put the photographic toning into your into your selections here now let's select one that we like uh, oh I quite like that one there um, or that one I'm going to select this one here good and then uh, it's harmonized the colors very nicely there as you can see now what I want to do is create this double exposure effect. So what I want to do is copy this layer at the bottom and put it on the top and change the blend mode of it. So if I hold down the Alt key, as I click on this layer, I can drag it right to the top, release it, and it creates a layer copy, a direct copy of the layer at the bottom. 
And then I'm gonna change the blend mode of this top layer to screen. Click the drop down arrow there, go to screen, just like that. Um, I'm also gonna right click on it and I'm gonna create a clipping mask just so that it is clipped all the way back to the bottom there like that. And as you can see, it's changed the color a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the gradient map to the top again so it harmonizes all the colors like that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make these eyes shine through. So I'm gonna press Control and the plus sign to zoom in a little bit, hold down the space bar, bring it down so I've got these eyes. I need to find the layer that is, sorry, let's cancel that, that is hiding these eyes. And it's this layer here. As you can see, it's the river layer. I'm gonna select the mask of that river layer. I'm gonna use a paintbrush, black paint. I'm gonna change my brush size by using the bracket keys. And I'm just going to paint a mask over them eyes so that they shine through. That's great, just like that. Nice and softly. And now the eyes are shining through, paint it a bit darker in the middle. I also don't like these ears uh, with the image over the top, so I'm just gonna blend that out a little bit as well on that side. I'll down the space bar and blend it out over this side as well. Okay, that's great. Control zero to full screen it. And now we've got the eyes shining through and that's starting to look um, really nice now. Um, I want to now make this more contrasty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a curves layer um, at the top, uh, at the top layer, curves adjustment layer. So I click this symbol at the bottom, go to curves. I'm going to put a nice S curve in here. Like that, make it even darker. That looks nice. Yes, good. And then that gives it a lot more contrast as you can see. And now I'm gonna create a nice background. So let's go for a new layer. This layer's got to be right down to the bottom underneath. So I'm gonna put that under there. Um, I'm gonna go edit fill. Edit fill. I'm gonna select color. I'm gonna move that out of the way. And I'm gonna select a color within the image itself. So that's quite a nice one there. Click OK, click OK again. And now what it's done, it's, select, it's created this kind of um, look in the background like that. Now I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna drag that right underneath to the bottom again. And I'm gonna fill this layer with white. Shift F5, select white from the drop down menu like that. Then I'm gonna go back to this layer three. I'm gonna change the opacity down to around about halfway, something like that. I'm gonna create a mask on this layer. I'm gonna have a nice big and soft edged brush, brush, right click, put your hardness down to zero. Make sure, press the enter key, make sure that you're on a black paintbrush, a uh, black color down the bottom here. And then I'm just gonna paint around the edge of the head to give me this kind of vignette like that. That's good. Just nicely, just softly blend it out like that. Now that is not bad. And that looks really nice. I'm really pleased with that. And that is one of the many ways that you can create multiple exposures using Photoshop. So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial and you followed along nicely. If you like our tutorials, don't forget to subscribe and like and follow us on social media for, for more. And remember, learn more at the School of Photography.